Hello, my name is Abdul Momin and I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and a public health professional. Okay, so in today's video, I am going to talk about uh, proteins. <clears throat> Why I am uh, going to talk about proteins is the fact that proteins can play a very important role in recovery from a particular disease. So say for example, uh, we are talking about Corona these days. So if someone has been exposed to coronavirus and he is trying to recover, so in that particular case, protein can um, along with the medications protein can play uh, an effective role in the recovery from that uh, particular viral infection so basically um, as you might uh, know already proteins are made up of smaller units known as amino acids and we can classify amino acids into two types basically uh, one we call them as essential or non-dispensable amino acids um, and the other uh, type is called the non-essential or dispensable amino acids now when we talk about the essential or non-dispensable amino acids um, they refer to those amino acids um, which our body cannot synthesize and we have to get these amino acids uh, from the uh, diet um, and on the other hand when we talk about the non-essential or dispensable amino acids these are those uh, which can be synthesized by the body and uh, it does not matter to us if even if we don't get these from our diet um, so <clears throat> On the basis of uh, these, uh, basically proteins can be classified into two types. One uh, is complete proteins and the other is incomplete proteins. When we use the term in, uh, complete proteins, it means that all those proteins which give you all the essential amino acids so these are classified as complete proteins so say for example egg for example meat chicken fish uh, mutton beef in any form meat uh, and soya protein soya protein is the only plant-based protein which is uh, classified as complete protein that is it gives you all the essential amino acids now on the other hand if we talk about the incomplete proteins um, these refer to those proteins which are lacking in one or more of the essential amino acids so for example peas for example chickpeas lentils um, kidney beans um, nuts these are all examples of um, incomplete proteins now we use a very important term uh, with regards to protein that is known as biological value or bioavailability of proteins now what is that that is actually the usefulness of the protein food so in terms of biological value we uh, categorize proteins on a scale of 0 to uh, 100 uh, and uh, when we talk about the complete proteins their biological value is 70 to 100 and when we talk about the incomplete proteins their biological value is between 0 to 70 so when we talk about the complete proteins their biological value is 70 to 100 these include as I've already mentioned fish chicken um, uh, mutton beef and egg uh, and even soya protein and when we talk about the incomplete proteins uh, on a scale of 0 to 70 these include nuts uh, kidney beans chickpeas peas all types of lentils so these are the incomplete proteins egg is considered to be the most superior form of um, complete protein so therefore it has been given a biological value of uh, 100 uh, so that is a complete protein and it gives you all the essential amino acids in the uh, best proportion so uh, whenever uh, you are trying to give proteins to someone who is sick who is recovering from a disease always focus more on complete proteins or uh, those proteins which give you a complete profile of all the essential amino acids so which includes um, egg or the proteins from animal sources or the soya protein so that is it from my side today i hope now you have understood uh, what um, is meant by the biological value or bioavailability of proteins um, and now do subscribe my channel if you haven't done so uh, press the bell icon like my video um, let me know through your co uh, comments if you are liking the content or not. And most importantly, share this video with others so that others can benefit as well. Until next time, it's bye-bye from my side.